Good evening, everyone. I call this meeting to order of the Lake Bluff Public Library Board of Trustees at 7.01 p.m. I'm going to share my screen, show you all a couple of documents here. As you see, we have a packed agenda. Um, going to our agenda on 2A, do I have anyone um, to propose any changes or additions um, to tonight's agenda? Um, a couple of things, if I may. For starters, I've heard from the friends I forwarded to you. They're looking for a trustee in Saturday's meeting. So there's that. And they included a list of future meetings, which I will send to Renee. And maybe yes, Renee, you, can, you can pop that out and people can uh, sign up via you. Um, so that's number one. Number two, as you said, it's a packed agenda and we tend to try to get this meeting closed by nine and that's actually late for us. So I wondered if we could prioritize budget then um, uh, the discussion on the reading that we have um, and then building survey. And if there's, if we can't discuss that, we could get emails to uh, building and grounds members and kind of work with that sort of thing. Uh, we'll I think that's that. an appropriate proposal. Um, so what I will do is I will just flip the order under new business. Um, the budget will still be first. I will put the discussion of the serving our public 4.0 standards as um, letter B and then um, the survey report. Although I, I do wanna add that we have to review the per capita grant application and approve that so that we can submit that by the deadline. Yeah, I was um, referring to that as being second. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, so I mean, together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. no, that's fine. So, so the we'll budget do... and uh, the per capita are must, must do. Must do. We'll put those together then. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other um, suggestions for changes or edits or add um, additions? <laughs> additions. Okay. With that, um, we will add those topics under new business. I have added the friends update as well under new business, Kathy, and okay. um, changed the order of new business to accommodate those changes. Thank you. All right, um, moving on to the opportunity for the public to address the board. Do we have any public here tonight that would like to address the library board of trustees? Hearing none, we will move on to the next agenda item in our agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of December 13th, 2022 board meeting. Um, this is an action item. Um, do we have any edits or action or changes anyone would like to propose to the minutes? None. Mm -hmm. Nope, no changes. Changes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I so move, it's Bonnie. Bonnie, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Was that John? Yes. Thank you, John. Oh, gotcha, Matt, I got your message. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion carries approval of the minutes from December 13th, 2022. Um, I will just adjust my uh, screen sharing here to reflect where we are in the agenda. Just give me one second, thank you. All right, moving on to the December financial reports. Um, first, I'd like to review the expenditures. Um, excuse me. First, I'd like to review the re revenue. Um, and I have a couple of items I'd like to highlight in the uh, revenue section of the report. Um, first, I'd like to highlight the fact that we did not receive any property taxes for a second month in a row. This is for December 2022. Um, I spoke with Bettina this evening, actually, um, who extends her, apologi her apologies and said, well, you can blame me. Um, she had 
uh, personal time off in December and was delayed in transferring that payment. Um, she says she will prioritize that as soon as possible. She's also going to see what the interest income impact is going to be and send a worksheet um, as that is uh, an integral part of um, missing those dates, the delay of the disbursement. Um, and so uh, we are owed a payment for December and the library is owed that disbursement. So she will um, make that as soon as possible. Um, so I wanted to highlight that. Um, also in December uh, 2022 for again, still revenue, um, I want to continue to highlight the incredible uh, revenue received um, from the work of staff uh, at the service desk with passport fees. Um, you will note that this is more than double um, the amount of revenue we received last year at this time during December. Um, and we are well on our way. Um, I am told by the end of the fiscal year, a projection merely, um, but potentially as much as 30,000 uh, dollars in revenue received by the end of this fiscal year. That is a projection only, um, but it continues to be a, a really favorable uh, revenue stream for the library and thanks to the staff for their efforts in that way. Um, I do want to mention later in our director's in my director's report a couple of additional uh, statistics relating to that. Um, but in terms of revenue, another thing I'd like to highlight, um, which was different for me um, to see, and I want to highlight for all of you. Um, so what I'm looking at right now is the line that I've highlighted, the license renewals. Um, I've talked to Katie about this in depth, um, and I just want to acknowledge Katie and thank you for your help with understanding this a little bit more. Um, Basically, I wanna give you some context. There is no annual fee for the library to be charged as a facility to renew licenses. And this is the, the license plates on the back of your car. We do receive a small portion of each license renewal application as um, revenue, similar to the way that the passport um, process is set up. Um, but it in no way, shape or form takes as much staff time. Um, and But at the same time, there's also not as much of a demand for that. It's a smaller amount of revenue. Um, so just a little context about what that is. Um, it's also, it doesn't require any staff certification aside from just training to learn how to um, process those applications. All levels of staff can do this at any desk. Um, so when I saw this, uh, I thought I, I, I would question uh, Katie and I were discussing what this could potentially be. Um, we will be contacting Laurence just to see what this is. It's possible it's a small uh, accounting error because we are not charged as a library um, for anything additionally uh, aside from, um, well, we're not even charged, but the money that we receive from each license renewal, we get a portion of that fee back um, to go towards revenue. So I am not sure what this negative 155 is, um, and I will be reporting back on that um, to all of you. Uh, I just wanted to let you all know that that is on our radar and we're going to look into it. The last item I wanted to highlight uh, in terms of revenue here is our interest earnings. Um, just to reiterate that um, we continue to receive a healthy amount of interest gathered from our investments, and you can see the change in investment strategies is proving lucrative for the library with regarding to revenue. Um, so a lot of growth and positive output in that area. Um, are there any questions or discussion about the revenue section of the expenditures? I'm going to move on to the, excuse me, any questions about the revenue report? I'm going to move on to the expenditures next. Right, um, on, on the um, the property tax, Renee, did Bettina give you any idea of how much would be posted in there? Is it in line? She didn't. Okay. She didn't. But I looked last year. Um, actually, I looked at the last three years to see if there was ever a month um, 
in December where we didn't receive anything and, and that wasn't the case. I believe it was um, 2019, we received approximately 10,000. The following year was somewhere around 20,000. Um, so it's a, it's a smaller number in comparison, but then when I look at last year's amount, you know, that's much different from previous years. And I know that those factors can change depending on the deadlines and um, and kind of the schedule for payment, also just the way that this, the residents submit payment. But she didn't give me a number, but I can certainly find out as soon as possible. Okay, she, just, curi just curious as to um, how close to closing the gap on the- Yes, absolutely. She said um, there was a family wedding and some sickness and, and everything. So she apologized for um, the impacts of that and okay. wanted to pass that along. Renee, how is our how is our investment? What is our what's the nature of our investments? Well, and that's something that I'm going to continue learning about. But my understanding is recently, within the last fiscal year, um, a change was made in the way that we are investing our revenue or our, we are investing our savings. Can I um, can yeah, I, I put exactly? I was going to uh, give it to you, Bill. Um, more. Yeah, I think I think John, what they uh, what they did, in, instead of having a sort of one of those standard bank um, um, low low interest rates, right, um, right, with the with the capital fund that we have, um, I think um, they looked at it more of a higher interest loan, uh, a higher interest um, account, and that's what's generating that. So as interest rates have been going up, we've been sure. seeing some some more stuff. So it's. Would that be like a six month CD or something like that? I don't think it is. I think it's one of those um, sort of premium accounts, like a oh, real money market, yeah. general money market account. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. Marquis or um, um, sometimes, you know, like Fidelity will have those and it will, it will change with the, the interest rates. And they, okay. they're paying something in the region of even at, at, at that, like three or 4%. So I'm not sure what, um, what, what it's in, but it's definitely, you know. Okay. That's in, fine. It's, I just, you know, curious. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bill. And I can look, I can dig a little deeper into that to tell you exactly what type of money market fund, if it's, if that's what it's in, what our interest rate exactly is. And, and Bill's right, every, it, it will have some, you know, uh, variability right. month to month too. Yep. Yeah, as, as I recall, uh, there's two accounts. There's an account in, in Illinois, Illinois, which is where property taxes funnel through to get to municipalities. And for a, a long time, dollars sat in that account, which was very low interest rate, and we had no control over it. And then I believe we be, we developed a transfer of more funds into our bank, and which is like First Bank and Trust, which afforded us a larger rate. So I think that's what okay. what's going on here. But it's it's, it's a good it's a it's been a couple of years, so it's a good time to check that out and see yeah. if still if we're still in the best place. Right. Yeah, and and um, <laughs> Renee, if you're talking to Bettina about um, what what could potentially get posted for the property taxes, um, if if she has an idea of what she thinks that um, from a budget standpoint would be a good number for that um, interest earnings, because that number has gone up considerably even over the course of the last two or three months. It's, it's, it has. Uh, yeah. Well, and yeah, basically... What I asked her is because we haven't received those funds and therefore the loss of potential interest revenue, um, you know, is that going to be accounted for? And that's where she said there will be a worksheet submitted. So essentially a, um, a change to be made in addition to um, the transfer. So yes, um, I will follow up with her. And it seemed like she already knew that that was going to be taken into account that additional interest of um of money the loss of interest during the time of the delay okay any other questions about the revenue portion of the expenditure the financial report i just want to make a footnote it's an observation if the um passport fees come in at the level that we're that we're forecasting right now and maybe this is more for your director's report or subsequent conversation but based on the amount of um, effort that the staff has had to put into it and as a way to reward them for that I might think we might we might look at how we um, 
you know, allocate that that overage to the budget and whether there's a staff bonus or something tied to that. Um, yes, I, I think that is a strong consideration. Um, that is something that was brought up in another conversation already um, with, uh, with Kathy and Bonnie. And we will be having an HR committee meeting very soon. Um, Jenny is going to be, I'm going to be scheduling that um, with Jenny and Janie and Bonnie, I believe are the three on that committee. Um, and so that will be a topic of discussion at that committee too. So thank you, Matt, for um, that suggestion. All right, I'm gonna move on to the um, expenditures section of the report. Um, one moment while I, so this is 4B. There are a couple items I'd like to say overall. Um, we continue to take on, staff continue to take on responsibilities as they're transferring them to me. You know, staff are getting back to their regular workflow um, as they are increasing their capacity to do the work that they have been doing. And then I'm increasing my capacity to, as I continue to learn and, and take on more and more responsibilities of the director. So there are a few budget lines that have been impacted uh, because of this transition over the last six months without a director, um, but I don't anticipate any concerns spending the rest of the budgeted funds this fiscal year. I did just want to say that kind of as an overarching comment for the expenditure section. Um, so the few, oh yes, go ahead. Right I have here. a few items. Could you enlarge the screen a little bit? Could, could you enlarge what we're looking at? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, well, that's want to make sure I have all of the numbers on the screen for you right. um, as much as I possibly can. Is that better? Yeah, anything was better than it was. <laughs> yes. Thank you, good. Kathy. And I think you added something in the chat. I apologize for I, missing That was it. what I asked. Yeah, I Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you mentioned it. And um, Renee, Renee, it's Bonnie. Just, just hi, a Bonnie. quick comment. Hi there. Um, you know, um, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity yet to read through the goals of each one of the committees for the fiscal year, um, but it's, if I recall correctly, it's um, the last couple of years, to my knowledge, the finance committee typically earmarks a goal of how much of our operating budget they want to deposit into reserves at the end of the year to handle, you know, it's called, I think on the R sheets, it's called the general fund. I think sometimes we refer to it as the capital budget or, or what have you. <clears throat> so just, just, you know, we, we, I think months ago set a goal that we hopefully wouldn't spend all of the year's revenues <laughs> and that we would actually, yeah, transfer a good chunk of them. Yes. When I say, thank you for clarifying. When I say um, not spending the entire year, I meant um, spending the budget lines we had planned to spend and um, budgeting the amount of money that we had planned to transfer. Um, I'm referring to some of the budget lines that are underspent by the year to date. Um, I can kind of talk through that, but thank you. Yes, that is still um, being planned as being underspent because we already have that here budgeted. 16000 um, scheduled to transfer to reserve by the end of the fiscal year. Right. Having read the Enberg Anderson report on the state of the building and the various systems, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna need and we need to be doing some things fairly soon. Yes. So that is the the theme that you'll hear from me uh often the, tonight. Um that while we are underspent in some other areas uh, my priorities are to um, allocate and start spending that as soon as possible. So for example, the first thing I'd like to highlight um, is actually not related to building and grounds, but I just want to highlight um, under IMRF uh, contribution, um, I'm projecting that we are going to be underspent in this budget line um, I think that is primarily due to the vacancy of the library director's position for approximately six months. Um, I am interested in seeing what IMRF contribution is going to be next month because it will reflect a month of the director's position. Um, but 
All that to say, we're still about a thousand dollar difference um, in this budget line. So I do anticipate um, this budget underspent based on my analysis so far. Um, to the amount of which I don't know, but that's how I'm going to I'm going to have a number for you to share next month. Um, a little bit more about what I anticipate the savings will be. The next thing I wanted to highlight um, is our contractual services. So um, other professional slash contractual services, um, you know, one of the things that this relates, yeah, actually the whole section, um, there are several budget lines that are underspent, um, elevator maintenance, um, building in grounds, um, even something like uh, down here below professional development. Um, I think staff capacity has been a factor to these budgets being underspent given this time. Um, even something as if as, as, as in professional development, staff of having to navigate illnesses and keeping the desk coverage. Understandably, there's been less time for training and time away from the desk to dedicate to that. Um, so those are some of the some context to explain those uh, those budget lines being less than sixty percent um, spent year to date, um, and also just by nature of the fact that a lot of staff, um, given the last six months or so, um, there haven't been there hasn't been capacity to prioritize uh, buildings and maintenance and grounds maintenance um, and so forth. One thing I also wanted to add here is the firewall um, work that is going to be happening. Um, so if you go, I'm looking at computer services right here. We budgeted 14,000 for the year for computer services. Um, part of that budget is to update our firewall. And um, that has already been submitted to CVI, our computer um, management program software. Um, for them to manage the update and the installation of a new firewall. Um, my understanding is that our ticket has been updated to urgent so that they can prioritize this. Um, this is something that I know that we have to prioritize quickly so that it can be done but well before the end of the fiscal year. So I did wanna highlight, nope, I'm in the wrong one. I'm in the wrong you're okay. one. Okay, I think you're okay. Yes, that I am in the right one. Sorry, I thought I saw something else. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I also wanted to highlight down below something in programming. Renee, it's Bonnie. I've got a quick question for you and the staff about the firewall. Yes. Would the firewall update also include the, would that mean that if someone has a library card that is expired, our computers that are public use computers wouldn't allow that? card to be entered my understanding and martha or katie please add in here to this conversation um there's a separate system that manages computer use such as and i believe that's pc reservation um and so the firewall and pc reservation i'm not sure how those interact together um but my understanding is it's a separate product martha or katie do you have anything to add to this that's correct Good, so, because I didn't have anything else either. <laughs> okay, so um, what I can do is uh, contact CBI and find out more specifics about um, what it means to have the firewall updated, but my understanding is those two systems don't necessarily talk to each other. Um, but to your point, we need to come up with a more effective solution for when library cards are expired that to me i think is a com conversation with crystalware is that the name of the um the uh the company martha that manages that software envisionware envisionware thank you i'm sorry i got it That's really okay. close um envisionware manages the software that takes the computer passes and the library cards and Renee, so, if you could make a note for our next monthly board meeting just to provide an update on yes. that, I guess maybe the software is called PC Reservation and the name of the company we buy it from is Envisionware. Okay, thank you. Yes, 
So the question will be, um, what mitigation do they have to um, avoid situations like that in the future or just at all? Expired library cards. Thanks, Bonnie. And I think this is an item that's been discussed at previous board meetings. So I'll be sure to prioritize that. Um, other things that one last thing I wanted to highlight just related to um, program spending, because I know this may come up with our budget talk. Um, Eliza and I had a great conversation about um, bringing teens back to the library. And so you'll note that um, 1250 is budgeted for teen program supplies for this fiscal year. And we've um, currently spent only about 21%. Um, this is something I experienced in my previous library. Libraries are really having to reintroduce the library to a whole new generation of teens. Because of the pandemic, a lot of teens haven't visited the library <laughs> for many years. Um, and so it's almost like having to restart teen services and come up with a new strategy to, to bring them back to the library, just as we would think about all age groups bringing back to the library post pandemic. Um, so I wanted to share a couple of highlights that some, there have been initial programming successes, the teen and tween craft series um, has been very popular, that's also a very low cost program, but there are plans, um, Eliza and I have plans to really strategize what teen services looks like here at Lake Bluff, and programming is a big piece of that, and so um, this budget line will be underspent and we will account for that in either other ways, spending or the reserves. Um, and then there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of plans for spending the full amount for next fiscal year. So I just wanted to provide that context um, about teen services using the library. Are there any questions with regards to the expenditure section of the report, of the financial report? No. 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 Okay. Hearing none, I want to move to the balance sheet and just basically state that um, due to, you know, regular library activity, I'm not there yet, am I? Here we go. Thank you. Um, this reflects um, standard December activity. Um, and so open to any questions on that or any of the other reports we've reviewed so far in the financials. If no questions, um, do I have a motion to approve the financial reports from December, 2022? I'll motion to approve the um, December uh, reports. I'll second. second. Oh, so that was Matt and Bill. Matt second. So this is a roll call vote. I am going to pull up my screen so I can see everybody. Okay. So the side question. Is there a particular order with which I read people's names off? No. No. <laughs> I just went with whatever order Zoom put the screens in. All right, I will do the same. Reverse uh, alphabetical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or your favorite. Yeah. There you go. Um, all right. Thank you so much. Uh Trusty Hayes. Aye. Trusty Meyerhoff. Aye. Trusty Jerch. Aye. Trusty Zaudi. Aye. Trusty Heitzelman. Aye. Trusty Shaw. Aye. And did I go through everyone? I believe that is unanimously. Thank Probably you so not. much. No. Got Jenny. Oh. Got Jenny. Jenny. oh, Jenny, I'm so sorry. Where are you? Where okay. on my list? No problem. No, Hi. Trusty Graziano, excuse me. Hi. Thank you so much. Financial reports have been approved. Now we are going to move on to the review and approval of the check disbursement. 
All right. Um, for the most part, uh, the check disbursement is typical with what we would see for a December monthly expense. There are a couple items I wanted to call to your attention. Um, first on 6D, page 60, check to payment to Computer View Inc. And I'm going to pull that up here. Oops. Oh, Renee. All right, so check 15465 to Computer View Inc. for computer services. The amount of 3,500, I just wanna thank Martha for her help on this one. This is a standard bill of payment for our local area network or land management contract. So CBI is the company, Computer View Inc. Um, that's the abbreviation or CBI is the abbreviation. Um, this is part of our um, regular bill for services. Um, the next one I wanted to highlight uh, is Envisionware actually. Um, and this is, as we discussed, uh, the software for our patron and staff um, computers to utilize our um, computers and for printing as well. Um, and so in order to have that managed for um, staff to be able to use our computers um, and for, uh, for printing and then for patrons to use their computers um, and guest passes. So that's the one that we're gonna follow up on with Bonnie's question from earlier. And that was the amount of 522.75. Third, I wanted just to highlight because it relates to budget later on, um, you'll notice a considerable amount also for postage for passports, um, th over $300 for uh, postage. We continue to see increased postage needs with increased passport services, um, which is uh, makes sense. And so you'll see that reflected later in the budget report um, with a proposed increase to the postage budget line. Renee, excuse Renee. me. Yes. Yeah, this came up in a conversation earlier this week. I, I'm questioning in general why, if I believe our, our, our fee, to the library from a passport is $35, that that's not to us, is that correct? Yes, and I'm gonna lean on Katie and Martha for these, but the, the amount of money that we receive, was that the question? Right, and so out of that $35, we're coming up with um, uh, budget reports like we're looking at tonight at, at very impressive um, return on our efforts for, for passports. I question why we are not taking the passport fee out of that $35 and then coming up with a total which accurately reflects the um, payment to the library for that processing rather than, um, it's almost like a disproportionate jacking up of the uh, um, postage fees which can be easily accounted for where it's coming from and we're paying for it. So. And I, I, I don't get that. I don't really understand why we're increasing one line and not appropriately reflecting um, what our uh, income from the passports are. And for others, we discussed this at the finance committee meeting and Bill and Matt, feel free to jump in here. One of the things that we discussed, which might be reported on during the committee reports was a small edit to the way our counting um, is read for that particular line. Um, so currently we have a process to receive the revenue from passports, but then we also have an accounting process to pay the money for sending all of the passports through mail. So they're separate and Kathy is asking if there's a way we can fold all of that um, accounting into one line to more accurately reflect and be transparent about why there's an increase, why this money is so high or why there are postage fees um, and or the, relating the it to that is, is there an accurate reflection on um, the revenue of the passport program? Uh, mm -hmm. Passport is thirty five, and if it's a dollar to to post it, then it's really thirty four. Um, I I can get you that information. I have a spreadsheet that has all of the um, the uh, the amount that we get from the passport fee, and um, then the the net total once those uh, once postage is taken out. 
Um, also, some of the postage too is for any express shipping that's directly reimbursed by the um, the applicant. So yeah. there there is a, an amount of that too that is um, basically zero. But I can get you that um, amount yeah. if you're interested uh, in that. Yeah, thank you, Martha. And I, I would sure. like to see that. Um, but to Bill and Matt, uh, accounting wise, what's the the best practice here? Yeah, what, what we had discussed um, <clears throat> at the last finance committee meeting was to add a, an additional uh, ledger entry for um, postage related to the passports so that we get to sort of a net revenue line between yeah. our revenue and expenses for those. Um, <clears throat> so that was a takeaway for um, revision. And if Martha has that historical, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to backfill that ledger entry. And I think that would be instructive. Um, okay. Yep. I think it's just a more accurate representation. I mean, we're mm -hmm. It's a very successful yep. program, but we should be upfront about what the cost is. And we should also, it's, otherwise we're, we're spending a lot of money on postage and people would wonder what we're suddenly doing. Um, so and, just, to re, just to reiterate, thanks Kathy for bringing it up. And I knew we were gonna cover that in committee reports too. But since we're looking at financials, it makes sense to bring it up now. Um, and I haven't been able to follow up with Bettina yet about any particular um, ledger change. I was also going to ask staff about um, the reasons for the bookkeeping this way, if they knew, but I knew Bettina might have more information about why it's been done this way. Um, but for transparency purposes for our budgeting, um, the finance committee recommended um, having that separate process, having that separate ledger item. Um, yeah. And I think to answer the question you have for Bettina, it's the reason it exists this way is because we haven't had to contemplate this in the past. You know, yeah. So it's only been yeah. in the past few years. So, you know, we're just we just want to evolve our, our bookkeeping now to keep track of the revenue sources and, and the costs associated with those. I think um to last time, because there was a similar question about this, like I don't know, six months ago. No, not six months ago. I would have been on it, at some point. And I, I know that I ran the numbers and we were getting like once our direct costs were accounted for it was something like 92 percent of income from passports goes to us so it's still a pretty good net oh it's a tremendous net mm -hmm. um, I, i'm not trying to diminish it or the effort going into it i think it's fabulous but i think we should just be as accurate as possible it it, it once we get that 35 dollars, there's a cost to us to process it further and just deduct that it. it's still <clears throat> a substantial amount of income in a great program um and I'll add, Kathy, there are potential ways to evolve the way that the information is presented to you all based on the BSNA software. Uh, Bettina is going to provide me a thorough training on BSNA on all of the different facets. There could be opportunities for additional evolution, as we said, or just additional enhancement to the way. I think we also discussed at the finance committee uh, a name change for um, the fines and fees line because we no longer receive fines. Um, so just really great discussion about future process improvement. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any other further discussion about the check disbursement report? If not, do I, oh, sorry, did I hear something? No, I don't think I heard. The okay. only thing I would ask Renee is what are the check numbers? Um, well, I can look that up. No, you don't, don't answer that now. I can look that up, but whoever makes the motion is gonna need those numbers. Oh, I, I would, re I'm gonna read them off. Okay. Um, the other, the last thing I forgot when I turned my page, the, the last and final check I just wanted to highlight um, is 15487 for legal services from Peregrine, Stein, and Newman. Um, this was billed for the legal services provided to the library um, between March 1st and December 31st. Six hours were billed at a rate of $225 an hour. So that accounts for um, another line that I just wanted to highlight here. Do I have a motion to approve the checks? And I'm going to now refer to the document summary in the beginning. Oh, I thought I wrote it down. It, it is down there, uh, Renee. I'll, I'll, I'll motion to approve the monthly check 
from check number 15459 through 15488. I'm getting to know the differences between the document summary, the agenda, and then the additional agenda in the beginning. Yep, thanks, Thank Bill. You, Bill. There was a, usually there's a blank one in there. Yeah, there is. There, so it's it's 15489. Um, and then picking up again at 15460. So we, Katie and I, so Katie and I actually checked on that um, because you're 1000% right. There is usually a gap, but this time there was not a gap. Katie, can you confirm that we, we did that? It's, it's 61. Yes, it's, can it's confirm. 61, isn't it? You've got 459, 460, and then 62. So isn't it one five, to, to Jamie's question, is it 15461 that's omitted? Matt, I can say having signed the checks this month, there definitely is one in the front of the sequence that was voided. Um, I don't know if technically we don't, I mean, we can, we can still approve the check number as a voided check, but yeah, there was definitely a, a quote of a voided check in the series. It was definitely in the front. Okay. Yeah, I think Matt, Matt's right. I think one, five, four, six, one's missing. Six zero. Yep, and it's usually to Amazon because it's all the inventory of the new collection comes in and then all the detail it runs over a second check. That's my apologies, everyone. I am sorry for missing no, that. No biggie. Um, well, I'm still sorry. <laughs> um, it's easy to do. So yes, it should be amended to remove the check number one five four six one from the list of approved checks we should probably vote on that yeah yes that's a voting yep yeah, yeah. we um so i move to remove that check number that you just read from the list that was just approved or did we actually vote on that I had a motion to approve the financial reports, um, and I had Matt second, and I think Bill um, first. Well, uh, motion. I, that was the financials. This that's, is for the yeah, approval the, of checks. Yeah, okay. I hadn't gotten there yet. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So no. I can make a motion then to approve the monthly checks 15459 through 15460 and 15462 through 15488. I think that should should work. I'll second that again. And this is a roll <laughs> call vote because um, it is financial with relation to money spent. So I'm gonna run through the list of trustees again. Uh, Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Jurch. Aye. Trustee Zaudi. Aye. Trustee Heinzelman. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Meyerhoff. Aye. Thank you, everyone. And my apologies again for my oversight. With that, the check disbursement report has been approved. Thank you all. Um, we are, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. We are now going to move on to committee reports. Um, only one committee has met during the time of our last board meeting, and that was the finance committee, um, who was chaired by um, right. Trustee Hayes. Okay. So the, the, uh, I know we're going to go through this in a, in a, a little bit more detail, but the Finance Committee met to go over the um, preliminary budget for uh, 2023 through 2024. Uh, uh, so um, we, re we reviewed um, that. Renee prepared um, what's later on in this um, uh, board meeting uh, with the, the PTEL 5%. And we ran through um, 
like I said, preliminary expenses, made some uh, modifications. I don't think the, any of the modifications we were talking about, Renee, are in the draft here. So No, I was the, going to present that to you all and say this was the report that yep. was presented to the Finance Committee, and um, there will be changes amended, and you will all receive that later. Right. Mm -hmm. So you it, got it. it was it was it was uh, pretty de pretty detailed. We went through line item by line item and uh, looked at um, what the reasons and rationale for any differences in the in the in the budget. So I think it was a pretty thorough meeting, uh, probably more thorough than we've had in the past. So um, and I will will open up for discussion once uh, we uh, uh, bring that up a little bit later. So I, I don't think it's anything else I have at this moment in time. Uh, Thank you, Trustee Hayes. Is it customary to open up for other committee members who were there to add, or is it just the, the chair? No, no, I mean, no, um, Matt and Kathy, if there's anything else that you want to add, uh, um, please free if there's something I've forgotten. But I know we're going to go through it a little bit later. Yeah, and great job. And it was a wonderful meeting. It was very, very informative for everybody. Um, typically, Renee, the, the committee chair reports on the uh, committee meeting to the full board. And then obviously if there's questions, it happens at this time, unless it's somewhere else in the agenda. Well, thank you. I'll open it up to questions for, for Bill at this time. Hearing none, um, no other committees met, but I will add, um, we have scheduled um, our building and grounds committee meeting for Monday of next week. I'm working on scheduling a follow-up finance committee, as well as um, plans to schedule a meeting with the HR committee. So th there are plans for those committees to meet within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and Renee, we had discussed also having um, scheduling special topics. Uh, oh yes, you, oh, we were gonna bring that up in new business. Yeah, that sometime this month, hopefully we'll get to uh, special topics. I wanted to be sure, especially for any members of the public, that that is still an active committee. Um, we will be meeting. Our next topic will be policy review that I know Matt and Bonnie were working on, and obviously follow-up discussion with staff reporting on uh, the, rep the uh, redesign of the computers uh, where, where we have them, and then any obvious discussion necessary. So um, that meeting will happen hopefully January. Then we'll report back to the board in, in February. Absolutely. Thank you for adding that, Kathy. Okay. Thank you, Bill, for that report. Okay. I am going to share my screen again and move on to the new business summary, which you all have received. Thank you for your patience. If you get motion sickness, look away. This is not the time to look at the, the screen. Um, I was told that in times of uh, hefty board uh, topics and agendas, it's customary to present a new business summary, which was presented as such. Um, the order with which we will be reviewing uh, the new business, again, we made a slight change. It is the budget draft first, the per capita grant discussion and review of the application. Um, as time permitting, the friends update and the building survey report. Okay, so with that, I'm going to come back to the, or go back to the, not back, go to the budget proposal draft that was presented to the finance committee um, last week during our meeting as Bill was referencing earlier. Um, this was the budget proposal as it was presented to the Finance Committee. Um, there were several great changes and recommendations for adjustments, um, and those will be made and presented back to the Finance Committee for final review and discussion. And after um, that takes place, the final proposed draft budget will be uh, presented to the board. Um, this is the initial reading, which identifies the 5% levy that we received um, or that we, was approved. Um, and a few things of note that I would like to talk about with this uh, particular report. Um, 
we learned in the finance committee discussion that the green column is not necessarily an accurate reflection in all of the spending um, lines. And so what I'm going to be doing is presenting an updated uh, proposal uh, with year to date spending of this fiscal year so that the finance committee can see what our spending is for this fiscal year up to date to end of January and make the most uh, informed decision possible as we budget for next year. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions, discussion, or comments as you all have had a chance to review the, the first draft. I'll highlight one last thing, sorry. Um, the numbers that we're looking at for fiscal year, 23-24 for the budget, what has been requested is in the second blue column. The first blue column has been budgeted for 2023, so if you want to see the difference about how that's been adjusted and what has been proposed for revenue and then later expenditures, um, that is the difference. Opening up for uh, discussion amongst the board. Discussion questions or anything. I would assume that um, the decrease in uh, medical insurance is due to Eric having been gone for half the year. Yes, with current spending, or do you mean for the next year's budget? Um, I'm looking at or both. The, I'm looking in the one, two, three, fourth column um, under medical insurance. It shows uh, a minus 10.5% change there, yeah. And so what you'll see here is 86,000 was budgeted for fiscal year 22-23, our current budget. This estimated spending was based on number was based on numbers that Eric presented before he left. Okay. And so what this number refers to is this number in comparison to that number. I see. Okay. So I, I would hesitate by saying um, it, it's, this isn't the most accurate reflection of the budget based on the numbers that I received, even though I thought they were, but it wasn't. So if we were to look at it from last year's budget to this year's budget, we're actually increasing. Um, okay. But there are additional savings to your point, Janie. Um, there are savings in the librarian line, um, the medical insurance line, the IMRF line, and social security line based on the difference in salary. Um, I'll also add that um, the difference in contribution to IMRF, that's a set percentage for library staff, and that's based on their salary. And so because of the difference of a 10, you know, a 10 year tenured library director versus the current, there are some considerable savings there too. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. What's the major factor in the building maintenance increase? Um, much of that to be discussed on Monday, I think. Um, and a lot of that related to the report that we received from Engberg. Um, architects. Uh, there are considerable opportunities for building enhancements and maintenance that have yet to be prioritized um, by the committee, um, but there are projects that could potentially be um, utilizing that increased uh, budget. Okay, yeah, that's a good observation, John, too. That, that's an area yeah. we took up, you know, 18% versus the budget, 20, 20, almost 25% versus the experience. Some of that is lighting, plumbing. Um, we had a discussion in finance too about um, bidding out those contracts and maybe not um, just taking the you know the existing long-standing contractors if there's an opportunity for some savings without right. diminishment in service. Um, okay. But to Brene's point, we need to prioritize what con what's going to be spent within that budget um, okay. given the building grounds yeah. feedback. 
there's also um, um, a, a boiler that's going to need to be replaced next year. That was one of the items on the report that they highlighted that would need to be done pretty pretty quickly. So that I think was um, it was under ten grand, but it was uh, a significant amount, yeah. seven and a half. I guess. Um, did I know? Like looking back, are we are we under budget for grounds maintenance this year? Yeah. So we could yes we could yeah. look at that very carefully and do when we meet on Monday and see what we could do to fill in that spend those dollars this year. Yes, and that's an opportunity I mentioned earlier. There are ways that we can prioritize the most um, most meaningfully the budget that we currently have assigned to this fiscal year. We have a considerable amount of time still, um, depending on the project. Agreed. Okay. And you know, um, just another thing, thinking through the the two hours that I was on the four hour finance committee meeting <laughs> last week. Um, Kathy, you had mentioned that you know grounds maintenance costs that you, you were aware that those were increasing significantly due to labor shortages. So I feel like many of these things should probably be estimated to go up, maybe a little higher than five percent. And, yeah, I and think, that I think uh, grounds maintenance is different than that. Am I wrong? Uh, I think we did move that one up to two grand. I think that went up to eighty five hundred uh, uh -huh. when we were discussing in the next budget review. That was one of the accounts we increased. Yes. yes. So, so to to Confirming reiterate, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, took it to eight k. Yeah. The second but point I wanted to make was in regards to building maintenance. I don't know if, oh, yeah. you know, it wasn't mentioned that, you know, the, the new toilets that were um, brought into the library after the existing ones were failing. And these commercial toilets are a lot more expensive than the residential toilets. Yeah. Um, so I, I again, th those will probably hopefully be included when the green row in the middle gets updated with year-to-date actuals opposed to Eric's old estimates. Um, but well, that's something that that's um, th there's still another toilet I think that needs to be replaced. Yeah. Yep. And that was in the budget proposal for next fiscal year, the last toilet. Um, not this fiscal year, although we could certainly look to see if it's possible, given the estimates I was given already. Um, and just by mere fact that we are a public space, commercial toilets last much longer and are pretty standard with facilities such as ours. Um, there is that increased financial piece. I, in the proposal that was sent to the finance committee, um, increases such as contract renewals, if there's any inflation, um, or if there's potential in uh, in that particular industry for increased costs. I did incorporate those into um, as much as I could into uh, those proposals. And then at the end of the finance committee, what we discussed was um, adjusting the amounts as needed as we bring in the per capita grant and the other grants um, that we discussed on the third page um, to balance because that currently is not reflected in the revenues page currently. And that was a good catch by Bill. Um, we haven't brought that money over from that third spreadsheet. Um, and so therefore there's additional funds to be dispersed, some of which we've already discussed at a staff level based on what you've all reviewed for the per capita grant um, and, and other opportunities as well. I do wanna mention um, a considerable discussion that we had um, about salaries. Um, one of the discussions that we had was um, the importance of a salary comparison. Um, there's a lot of evidence to me uh, already being here that our salaries lack competitiveness in the industry of libraries. Um, and I think with relation to job descriptions and job duties, um, there's an opportunity to see how we compare um, with other comparable libraries in the field with regards to pay. And um, the salary adjustment that was made in the previous fiscal year helped get those jobs up to um, uh, hourly wage, uh, minimum 
uh, minimum wage, um, but I think there's additional work needed to adjust the job uh, the job salaries further. Um, an example I gave at department heads was our youth assistant position that we currently have open, if you know anybody. Um, that is not uh, an entry level position. That requires some mm -hmm. level of college. It requires some level of customer service experience. And um, we are currently rating that job at a $15 per hour after the adjustment that was made last year. Um, but based on the requirements that we're looking at, the min qualifications, it is, it to me in the industry, it does not reflect a minimum, you know, an entry level position. So I think there's some work there and we've made room for adjustments to be made in both the librarian salary and the staff salary lines um, in anticipation of that information being received. Any further discussions, questions about the budget draft? No. Well, there's no action at this time. It is simply um, for review. Um, it will go back to the committee for further um, edits and finalization. And then the committee uh, will propose, uh, will make a proposal at its final state. Um, of the budget proposal. So thank you all. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that we can move on to the next agenda item, which is um, uh, our discussion of the per capita grant, um, first of which is the discussion of the chapters in um, serving our public 4.0 standards for Illinois public libraries. I just want to start by saying thank you again um, for your willingness to, uh, to take on this uh, requirement. This is a requirement of this year's per capita grant. Um, every year, the requirements are slightly different. Um, and, and we learned uh, last minute that this was a requirement. So uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Um, what we've identified are um, the different chapters in this book. Um, and we're going to open it up for a discussion chapter by chapter. Um, starting with the introduction. And so um, I'll simply be facilitating, you know, moving on from chapter to chapter um, with the trustees who have been assigned to each chapter to share a brief overview um, and any lessons learned or uh, best practices they, they took from, from their reading. So let's start with um, introduction. Any comments or thoughts about the introduction? Well, I thought it was in how to write your long-term, yeah, you know, long-term planning. I mean, it was just you, those checklists will be invaluable and save a tremendous amount of research on what we should be doing, and um, just a great introduction to the and to the. Book. Renee had called me about this. I was glad to see the chapters are pretty short after our, our original concern about it. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's just a lot of, you know, good, this is what we should be doing and, and let's make sure we are. In reading them, I, I felt that we meet certainly the basic essential standards. And I felt that we, we pretty well meet the 23 core standards as well. I don't know if anybody else agreed with me, but reading through them, I thought, well, you know, we're, we're certainly not dropping the ball on any of them. No, and, and I think kind of along, what, along the lines of what Kathy was saying, that it does provide a good checklist of, of maybe some things that maybe um, we need to just maybe formalize a little, a, a little bit more. And especially like mission statement and long range strategic plan, which we've talked about that that's something on the, on, um, on the agenda to, to update. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, 
Well, thanks so much for those initial comments. I'm pulling up on my second computer over here, the different chapter names. That's why I keep looking off to the side. Yeah. Um, so uh, chapter one, core standards. Uh, who'd like to- uh, Governance, was this governance? Government. That's chapter two. Well, that's chapter two. To me to butt in. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're uh, ahead of the game, John. It's my number one, so. <laughs> so who, who do you want to hear from, Renee? Anybody. So course six, do we, do we, um, wh where do we keep that code of ethics? For the board or for the library or both? Library. Um, so there's the ALA, the American Library Association's code of ethics for the profession. Um, and that may be, I mean, that is online and there may also be a statement in our personnel manual I don't know off the top of my head if it's referenced okay. there um, but if it was it would be referenced in our personnel manual and that was something uh, yeah. of interest for me. should we move on to governance and administration since it is John's number one um, <laughs> any other reflections or comments about core standards Well, and I appreciate what Janie said earlier too about um, having a really strong understanding and, and foundation for Lake Bluff here at the library for most of the core standards, if not all. I agree. Well, John, do you want to start us off? Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, this probably may be an easy one. Do we file an IPLAR? Yes. So um, IPLAR, the IPLAR report is the um, report that is. Oh. Muted. I'm muted. I apologize. I Sorry. accidentally pressed it again. Um, it is required by the per capita grant to even be eligible to receive that funding. Um, and it is specifically to receive and, and um, curate all of the data in Illinois for um, Illinois public libraries. And so um, not all libraries in Illinois do submit IPLAR based on their capacity and so forth, but most libraries um, do, and we certainly do. Um, that is something that's done annually. I know Anna has helped a lot with the previous director in getting those statistics submitted. So it refers to a, a long range strategic plan as part of that submission. How closely do they look at the, or is it just kind of a check checkbox? Because it's been a while since we really updated our plan. And the per capita grant, as we'll discuss next, is um, almost a wish list. It's an exercise for the library staff to review all of the things that they need to or they should um, consider in their annual planning and their work. Um, and the long range strategic plan is one of those recommendations. So that's why you see in the application that I drafted with staff, um, phrasing like we can, or the library can, we're not held to accomplishing all of the things that I put in the grant um, as I reminded staff multiple times, but these are areas that even in the process of filling out the grant, we can um, evaluate and prioritize. So the long range planning being one that they recommend. Okay. Um, so two other things, I don't mean, I don't wanna dominate, but um, do we, have we formalized the orientation program for new yeah. board members? I am looking currently at a binder uh, that yeah. says um, new director orientation. So I know okay. we have something in print. Um, 
The Illinois Library Association also has a really great series online um, that's video. That's an introduction to um, being a public library trustee. Oh, I um, and I believe that's available for free. I don't know if that was ever shared previously, but that would be something that I would share um, in April uh, to prepare our new board members with onboarding in May. That'd be great. Yep. I do remember doing that as a new trustee. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Last one, do we have a succession plan written? Um, I'm gonna lean on Martha and Katie for this answer, but I don't think the answer is yes. Um, I th It's something that we've been working on um, for different roles um, that we started working on. I think uh, with, definitely within the last year, I'm trying to remember if it went a little bit um, prior to that, um, but that is that is something that um, that we've been working on documenting. Obviously, we haven't been able to get up a whole bunch of steam on that with everything. Um, but that that was something that uh, that Eric did put on our our radars um, about a year ago. So it's in progress. Yeah. yeah. So former former trustee Scott Butler was very much encouraging Eric and the board to pursue that. Right. Um, Eric or Scott left kind of unexpectedly, and I think it kind of mm. went with him, frankly. Because Scott him. was um, the one who really brought that up in in yeah. my memory. I think it was more than a year ago that that. Oh yeah. We started so, working on it. It was um, it was around the last time Scott did the um, performance review. Right. Director. Right. It's definitely important to have for any position, especially uh, leadership and management positions. Um, and so that along with documenting even just the roles and responsibilities in our current staff with their job description, um, that's that's key. I will say Eric and the staff put a wonderful binder together for me that will help. I'm not going anywhere, but that will help any any future employee in this position um, with regarding um, the next the next phase. Um, but we don't have that in documentation as of yet. You know, I don't um, I don't mean to put any undue pressure, but maybe we ought to set a goal to get it done. So yes, and and you know, John, I I want to um, prioritize also a, a variety of work: um, the creation right. of job descriptions, the review of all of our policies, right. um, in a the creation of a schedule to review all of our policies by the board and by staff. Um, I see a lot of opportunity, and I know the staff have as well, about formalizing some of these processes, and I'm really confident that we'll be able to get to work on them. Um, and the main one that I'm focusing on right now is the job descriptions, job descriptions because- right. Yeah, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. And I also think um, the personnel policy uh, is going to be the first one that uh, the policy committee looks at. Um, there are a lot of examples of where policy and practice don't align currently. And so we wanna make sure that all of that documentation is reviewed and board approved. And I would suggest- I completely that, agree. I would suggest that um, HR really put together um, a timeline and with notes of the process we went through for replacing the director. Um, because I think we did a pretty good job with it. We, we learned a lot and we, we punted here and there, but um, to really reflect, go back over the, what we did step-by-step, step, who participated, how many people we needed and so on and so forth. I think that's, again, Renee, we don't want you to go anywhere, anywhere at all. Um, <laughs> but I think that's just a good tool to have uh, tucked away in, in a handbook somewhere. Yeah, it's great legacy planning and it's fresh in your minds. I think that's something yeah worth talking about. Jenny, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I have a draft timeline in place because Kathy had talked about that. Um, I think we had talked about it in maybe July or August over the summer. So I have something and we can put it on the agenda whenever we feel like it's um, a good time to review it or I could send it to you, whatever works best. That'd be great. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's actually a Janie, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say a couple of things that that jumped out at me in reading chapter two were um, 
that they uh, felt that, um, well, a review of most library policies every three years, but yeah. an every two year review of the policy on selection and use of library materials, both of those surprised me. Um, because I guess I don't feel like I've been in that many policy reviews in during the time I've been on the board. And the other thing that that surprised me a lot made me feel like I was back in the classroom again as an active teacher because continue education plus reporting on your experiences when you attend conferences and so forth. I thought, wow, I haven't done that since I was getting CTUs when I was teaching. Um, that's, that's a great idea. I just, I hope we can yeah. um, start doing some of that now that we're more or less beyond pandemic, but I certainly don't remember doing any of that even before pandemic. And that coincides with something I'm interested in having and the team um, at the library have heard me say this a couple times. I'd love to schedule, uh, put together a schedule of presentations by library staff to you all about their individual areas of work. Um, so for example, um, you services, having a report annually by Eliza to you all about um, the work that's happening in you services highlights, um, you know, important statistics worth sharing so that there's more, um, you know, really to elevate their work to you all so you can get a chance to ask them questions, um, but drilling into the specific areas of um, specialty that we have, whether it's electronic databases and ebook management um, or, you know, adult services programming and, and elsewhere. So um, it goes along hand in hand, I think, with the learning piece, because then you all get to learn more about the library directly from the staff that work there. Um, and if there are opportunities for them to have presented at a workshop or at least attended, they could um, we can have that included in monthly reports if that's in, of interest to um, so lots of ideas there. Yeah. And I would love to see those reports um, present at a board meeting just throughout. The oh, board yes. Board yes. yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Sorry if I wasn't clear. Yeah. yeah, those staff members presenting at a board meeting. Um, just something that Janie mentioned about the review of policies th every three years that jumped out of me because we don't do that. Um, the only time we reviewed policies, was, Eric, something would occur. Let's give an example of, you know, reconsidering some policies regarding public uh, computers. He would, uh, I'm sure with staff input, recommend a policy revision and then the board would vote on it. But um, yep. perhaps that's the process other than- Yes. Okay, because board members typically haven't been, but that has gone on. I don't know that all policies have been reviewed every three years. But it's a proactive strategy, you know, so that you're not running so that the organization's not running into a situation where maybe they have an out of date collection development yeah. policy and there's a request for reconsideration for a book that um, maybe their process for the public to request for reconsideration isn't up to date or um, really just for staff and for the library board to um, be proactive and strategic ahead of time and before anything happens. Yeah. We've kind of touched on personnel already. That's chapter three. Um, are we good to move on to the next chapter? I want to keep Kathy's yeah. comment in mind about 9 p.m. Um, yeah. and honor all of your time. Yeah, I, I just want to say one thing about personnel. I liked the emphasis on um, staff development, you know, on, during work hours through classes and workshops, providing staff opportunities to pursue their interests and to learn more about their own <sighs> visions. Yeah, that's great. And I think that the staff will be pleased to hear there is that support um, from the board too. Um, with continued increased capacity, I think staff will get back to a regular um, process for learning. I know that Jill is actually going to be attending um, a program, and maybe it's through the, the Botanic Gardens, correct me if I'm wrong, or Eloa Farms. It's to, um, it's to help learn more about um, preparing for gardening programs in the Seed Library. Jill, you're welcome to share a little bit if you'd like. 
Yeah, that's correct. There's a author talk as well for a woman that talks about uh, seed saving in Harlem. And I love the concept of talking about diversity and how our ag agriculture has really not really been connected in a lot of different ways. So it's a really great opportunity to provide, provide more feedback. And there's also a seed swap and it's at the Botanic Garden. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, Jill, for seeking that out for yourself. We're so excited you can go. Any other comments about personnel? Yes, go ahead. Whoever was about to talk. Janie, well, I, go for I it. I can jump in here. Um, one thing that struck me was th that salaries um, can be up to 60% of a budget uh, if you include benefits, up to 70% of the budget. I don't know if I've ever seen our salaries broken out as a percent of the budget. I was very curious about that. And that would, could be something I could easily do myself and have prepared for um, the HR committee um, when we do get together. Um, and that could be reported out to the board. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can crunch the numbers. Write that down. Any other comments? related to personnel. We move on, or we're on we're on chapter three, right? So we are, yes. So let's take a look at four because yep. um I I guess it was the survey. I looked in the survey and which you know is to, unfortunately it's just a very small group of people. But um there was a comment about uh, well, you don't need more space, you need more you need more books. Um, and then the comment was uh, from, I assume, Martha, that even our adult um, shelves are actually not ADA compliant. Um, so that means that there's more books in there than there really should be by ADA standards. So of course we need more space. Um, so that, that kind of jumped out at me that we are, I, I, I'm always impressed when I talk with staff just about anything, how they have these ADA numbers right at the tip of their fingertips they know what we're supposed to do but I didn't realize we were not complacent um so that that jumped out at me that that is something to be aware of to always know your limitations Eliza and I had had a conversation um in the uh, youth services not too long ago and she again she I was asking her about moving some stuff and at, right away she was measuring and she knew exactly what what is good and what's too much and what's not enough so that I'm impressed that they exist I'm impressed that we're so aware of them Kudos to staff, thank you for that. Kathy, you, you uh, made the same observation I did about the ADA. I was also very surprised that our current shelving is not ADA compliant in terms of the access here. I will add just based on my work and um, consulting in other libraries with regards to accessibility, it's not uncommon for libraries to not be compliant with ADA, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the reason is because a lot of libraries um, might be older buildings and uh, there, are, there are perceptions about what is ADA compliance and what is beyond ADA, what is just standard accessibility best practice. There's the level of the law, which is compliance, and then there's everything beyond that. And even something as if, um, 36 inches for a wheelchair to turn around in the middle of your um, space design. Um, you need to make sure that you have 36 inches um, around so that in traffic, um, in the, your space, people can navigate, uh, you know, compliantly in accessibility. And that's not the case often with library spaces being having been developed or designed a while ago. And so libraries tend to not do remodel projects because then what happens is once you make any change to the building, you are required by law to bring everything up to ADA compliance. And um, that is an investment and that also has an expense to it. So um, I think the staff have done an amazing job making do with the space and, and the way that they're providing service. And, you know, we have more information now and that can inform future improvements. Did we go through that process when we worked on the stroll room? 
where we, where we had to bring anything else in the building up to compliance. I don't remember talking about that. There might be um, a level of either percentage of square feet that is um, in terms of remodeling on your space. You may have had to put out permits for the showroom. I don't know if that process was taken care of during the remodel. Um, I, don't think, but, I don't think we did any things structurally that impacted ADA other than putting in a door, which was certainly wide enough. Right. But that was a new installation item. And so the city, you know, the village or the county or any, you know, um, place agency that would be aware of your uh, remodel or your construction would, um, they'd have that information on the permit and then they would follow up with um, a walkthrough to confirm with their punch list. But um, if it was merely superficial by, I mean, physically speaking, then Kathy's correct. Yeah, and Mike Crook did come by. They had several walkers. Um, if your information with, if good fortune continues, but usually when there's projects done at the library within the village entities, um, permits, the permits are issued, but the permit fees are usually waived. So we would hope that great. that that good policy continues to our benefit. But, That's um, great. Yeah, I was real impressed. You know, the the requirement for high priority of collection management, special access, electronic uh, collection, interlibrary loans. I think we're you know way ahead of that mark. I was just really happy to see that and how well we're doing. <laughs> Any other comments then with Chapter Four and access? Okay, moving on to chapter five, building infrastructure and maintenance. Any comments, um, lessons so learned? Yeah. Kind of surprising finding. Um, this goes back to the Enberg Anderson report. So these, these things are kind of folding together a little bit, um, but we it appears we don't have wet, a wet sprinkler system in the original building built in 1974. Um, which I find kind of surprising given that most of it's highly flammable paper, <laughs> most of the collection. Um, so again, an, another kind of surprising finding. Um, I also, um, just again, some general discussion on, on HVAC and uh, systems is um, the age of those systems. And, and I wonder, to what extent the HVAC system is able to really maintain the museum at its, you know, I, I expect that museums have maybe more stringent requirements for their HVAC systems and things like that. So I just thought it was all very interesting. I, I think, again, it's slightly, it's, it's in the framework of chapter five, but the Enberg Anderson report, if, if you haven't had a chance to read it, um, I, I think it's very enlightening and is a good place to maybe launch a roadmap from, um, you know, our Renee and, and, and others in committee, we've talked about um, how the library could potentially be, you know, a warming location or a cooling location for our, um, our, our library district residents um, that are maybe outside of the village and, and don't have um, maybe those good HVAC systems in their own homes. So um, just found it really interesting. And, and as some of you know, I um, am a habitual um, house renovator. <laughs> That's how I came to li live in Lake Bluff, <laughs> bought a house. Did a lot of lot of uh, systems work, a lot of bones and everything, and, you know, the fun stuff, the cosmetic stuff too. So I find that interesting for library to apply that. Bonnie, I, I completely agree with you. When I read through the Engberg Anderson report, I had no idea that we didn't have a functioning sprinkler system in the original part of the library. That sort of made my eyes pop out as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, that makes me want to check our insurance policy. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah any, what isn't paper is wood in our library. 
So, I mean, we don't have a, you know, but we can't change that right now, so. I think that's also just um, an impact of the age of the building and there hasn't been any significant remodel or renovation since then. And again, this is a code, you know, it would have been brought up to code if, if this work had been done or prioritized at some point in the history of the last 50, 60 years. I have to check. There's a museum has sprinklers. But when they put the addition on, uh, the wood addition, the wood building, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed that we weren't forced to, to upgrade well, then. Well, are there sprinklers over there? Do we know that? Yeah, there, there are. are. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do we have, do we know what the cost would be to install sprinkler system? Well, we're going to have to look into it. I think that's part of that report. It's an yeah. report, isn't it? Got it. Not, okay. Yeah. Other building infrastructure and maintenance comments? Well, your comment about reviewing the insurance policy is a good one. Uh, or just looking at it to see uh, in the meantime, before we get those sprinklers. Um, there may be a requirement for coverage that we have it. If there's damage. Yep. Or a reason to deny coverage if we don't. Right, right. These are valid comments. Yep, absolutely. Any last comments here? Or should we move on to safety, chapter six? No. How appropriate. Mm. They're all intertwined. There, there are a number of items on the on the safety checklist that, that I I'm not I'm assuming we have, but I didn't know. Like an emergency disaster manual and disaster plan. Does does that um, does that exist? Yes. Um, the the level with which it has been updated uh, to reflect current is currency is is unknown at this point. But I was given a copy of the library's emergency plan um, when I was here, and um, had it in a beautiful red binder. Um, but that is um, one of several procedures that internally staff and I need to prioritize to review. So I, I, I was going to say I I'm sorry I could be I could be wrong Martha I think you're more familiar with this than I am but I believe Eric did update that fairly recently like within the last year or two. Yes, it was before I went on maternity leave. It was updated. I think this is how so I two time years. Now. <laughs> two years. I I think it was either 2021 or 2022. So yeah, that's yeah. two years. Okay. <laughs> So, so all this, the safety checklists that, that come into play daily, weekly, quarterly, semi-annually, um, do those, are, are those on a regular basis or um, more done sort of quarterly, semi-annually and annually as opposed to daily? So what you all are doing is reading the chapters and reviewing the checklist. What the department yeah. heads have done to prepare for the grant application is they all read those checklists and they identified what areas we need to focus on and what needs gotcha. doing. Okay. So I have a very long list from staff and that's what informed the development of the, of the application of areas that we need to focus on. And that one is one that several staff identified we have not we have not done an evaluation of those items that and identified the frequency with which they need to be completed. Yeah. Be contemplating in that any any additional like in sp specifically AEDs, the defibrillator, or sadly even Narcan. Um, do we have an AED currently? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, the defibrillator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, we have. Can we can thank a former trustee, Carl Shones, for some big improvements in our safety plans. Carl was yes. the assistant police chief. And if you walk around the building, you'll notice numbers or letters at all the exits and entrances um, that Carl walked through the building with fire. And um, that is so, and we've had that situation of a 911 call last year. Um, that's how the fire I mean, picture yourself in a public building and you say, it's it's at the door by the red books. Well, nobody knows where that is, but those are all labeled with a letter or a number now. So fire and police know where to come in or where not to come in. 
and Carl also recommended, um, along with uh, the urging of the uh, former uh, Park District uh, Director um, Salty, Ron Saltsky. Um, and so we do have the defibrillator now as well. Um, but we do have to keep to make sure those batteries are up to date. I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. does that. Yep, we uh, check it every every night before we leave. Oh, great, great. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Anything else with regards to safety? Uh, just another quick comment. This came in um, as I did some outreach for the HR committee, talking to another library about the trainings they provide their staff. And they did mention training on how to use the fire extinguisher. So it also like feeds into the fact that there is no sprinkler system. <laughs> Um, I had, so I, I had I don't annual... know if that's happened. I don't know if there's been, you know, fire extinguisher training, but. Um... Martha, Katie, Eliza, Anna, Jill. Fire extinguisher training we have done at some in services, but it has been a while. So we should probably review that. Well, and we've sometimes reviewed them at the staff meeting verbally, um, the instructions for that, but that's probably worth doing in a more formal capacity. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember having some kind of training um, since working here, but as to when that was, I have absolutely no idea. This was a really great process, I think, for all of us, me being new, but also for the whole staff to just kind of take a look at a, a variety of our procedures, our practices, our, you know, the information we have um, to really look for opportunities to enhance and improve and um, streamline and uh, build our skills. And as someone who's participated in um, a fire extinguisher training, there's nothing like actually putting out a fire to understand how much pressure you need to use to push it down to actually know how it works. So, I mean, it's really helpful um, for staff and I see possible partnership with the fire department to do that. Yeah, our fire department is fantastic in outreach and training and coming out yeah. if you ask them. Mm -hmm. They really, really are. Um, I, I suspect they would be very, very happy to do an in-service on all this kind of stuff. Walk around the building, just refresh themselves and give suggestions. That would be great. The next section is chapter seven, collection management. Comments, surprises, reflections. Oh. I, I think that with the um, recent request for reconsideration, we kind of got some exposure as a board on the special topics committee to collection management um, and kind of the guidelines that are used for building the collection and even weeding out the collection. You know, I, I was surprised to learn that, you know, we're constantly weeding out the collection it's not like a one like this month we're going to do dvds the next month we're going to do adult fiction and the next it's like it's constantly happening um so i'm you know grateful in a way about the request for reconsideration because it brought it shined a little light on that for me yeah bonnie remember they're constantly buying books so they have to constantly um yep. To the calling. Mm -hmm. Yep. With limited space, right? Mm -hmm. Other thoughts, reflections on this chapter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it said somewhere there that eight to twelve percent of materials should be used for public use. Um, I don't know if that's, it's sort of like the 60 to 70% of sale. I mean, it all depends on your total budget and what it yeah. is, but that's a recommended number. I think there is, think there's a recommendation and then there's a state statute and I'm ha not having that number in my head, not having lived here for six years. I need to double check on what that percentage is. If anybody on the call knows off the top of my head, I believe Illinois mm -hmm. requires us to have a specific percentage of our budget devoted to collection. But if not, I can research it and let you all know. I used to know it, but it's not coming to me. I know. It's like, that doesn't help me either. I used to know it, Kathy, but I'd be, I'd be interested to know. There's absolutely, what someday I'd like to know the difference between 
the budget of electronic versus non-electronic for collection, if we know that. Um, I know the electronic is forever growing. Um, actually, that was in my recent budget proposal document. So that information is with Renee. Okay. Yes, and that will be um, at the end of your packet. Um, oh, you mean the, the proposed budget or the existing? Either way, it's in the packet. Oh, I mean, separate... when I submitted my budget proposals, yeah. which I guess would have gone to Katie because that was a while ago. Um, Correct. So I thought a I good put it way... in there. I know I calculated it. No, it's in there. Um, okay. I just misunderstood the question. I thought it was um, our current year. So as you can, um, I'm going to highlight for you, Kathy, really quick. Um, we have print budget lines and a, a lot of them and what I can do and work with staff to um, create a pie chart so that you can see how much is print, how much is digital. Um, but then you'll see here we have databases, which I don't know if you want that included. No, no, um, I, actually, I, I, I don't want to take time right now for this at all. Um, I was just okay. saying at some point in time, if we're within this whatever the percentage is, and then break that down, X number is digital, X number is non digital. But, and but the no state hurt. includes eBooks and digital materials sure. as part of their collection. So yeah, thanks for clarifying. Any other last comments? Chapter eight is system member responsibilities and resource sharing which may have been a new topic or a familiar topic to some. Well, one thing that jumped out of me in here is that um, the name Hugh Atkinson, who was responsible for getting a lot of stuff started in the state of Illinois, he was the head librarian at um, Urbana-Champaign, which is my alma mater. So I was excited to see that. And I remember how excited I was to, um, at the undergrad library, which was fairly new when I went down there, and it was a big deal because of the way it was built underground. For those of you who haven't been there, it's a great library. Um, and I was, um, I, I assume that we participate. I wrote myself a cryptic message, which I can't remember exactly what it meant here, mm -hmm. but participate in state library organizations? Question mark. I assume that we do. Uh, I know we're part of library sharing, interlibrary loans, all sorts of things like that. There are several that we're a part of, and can I open it up, Katie, to you to talk briefly about that? <clears throat> um, well, I, I guess clar clarification, you said we're a part of several. I mean, we we participate in interlibrary loan, which essentially gives us access to most, li most public and specialized in academic libraries in the state. Um, was there another was there another setup that you were referring to? Yeah, I just put it in chat. I didn't know how long you would talk. Um, the Digital Library of Illinois, for example, oh, that would be yes. resource sharing. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that um, on the digital end. Yes. And we're a member of Rails. Yes. And yeah, they they facilitate the um, the drop off of the interlibrary loan items and whatnot. Katie, did you say that um, we have access to academic libraries too? I thought it was Ye just other public libraries. No, we've we've requested items from other um, from academic and even some specialty libraries. Like it's been a couple of like military libraries that have loaned us some items. Um, really? Yeah, they may have different um, different loan rules for their items, and not all of the items may be available. But it's not uncommon for us to um, get requests for items that are only available at academic libraries. And I think um, I think we're usually able to obtain a copy somehow. Did not know that. That's awesome. There are other consortiums that exist that we're not a member of, um, and I think that's cost prohibitive, but one is called um, Lincoln, I believe is the name still. Um, yep. CCS is another one, and these are groups of libraries that either share 
their catalog or um, an aspect of their um, uh, online public computer system so that people can search for materials. Um, there's There are additional um, benefits to some of these consortiums, but in the consortia, but in the past, my understanding is it's been cost prohibitive in order to join for Lake Bluff Library. But um, with interlibrary loan, we have a lot um, through our fingertips. Well, let's keep on moving then. Um, next one is public services. So this encompasses reference, um, which is uh, the area of which Katie manages, um, readers advisory services of which all, a lot of staff, I mean, Eliza for youth services, Katie for circulation and reference, and, and Martha for um, uh, collection management. We all can get asked to recommend a book and that would be what is called Reader's Advisory. How can you help me find this next book I'm looking for? And reference you might consider as research or help, um, you know, finding nonfiction or even just some ready reference questions such as, you know, can you help me print? Um, can you teach me how to use Microsoft Word? Um, that would all be encompassed under reference along with many other things. I think we're doing a great job there. I mean, I went through this thinking of many examples just personally that I've used in times I've walked through and um, I'm sure there's books up today on, on Martin Luther King history. And um, we were always on time with dates and events. And, and um, I mean, it just shows that our librarians are so well, are so adept and so familiar with everything in the library and how willing they are to show it, show it off. Um, so I, I felt that we you know, fit all this category very, very well. Yeah, I would agree. I, I thought for a moment of levity to the, the standard that um, the library provide information about local history and events, given our neighbor was kind of, was kind of <laughs> I, I took a little humor in that. We exceed um, expectations in that yeah, area. Yeah, I think we checked the box there and then some, yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> And if I can actually just, just kind of uh, leapfrog here to the youth service chapter 11, I have the same totally positive 100% um, reaction to all of the services that they outline for youth serve and for young adult that I think we're just very much on top of all that. The, the literacy, the toys, the interactive, the partnerships, um, policies, activity, diversity programs, all of that is just fantastic. That's great. Thank you, Kathy. Well, chapter 10 is programming. Any thoughts, reflections, or surprises in that section? Here's one. Um, when it said, this was also in the references section. Um, at least one current reference for each subject area, but didn't specify what the subject areas were. So that's a little vague in my opinion. But. I almost wonder if they're referring to the Dewey Decimal System or the Library of Congress and the various subject areas identified there, but it can go, the specificity of which either system can go into is enormous. Yeah. Um, you know, and also um, with relation to programming, there's a, a phrase, not just books, but also I think programming can be windows and mirrors and sliding glass doors. It can reflect our own self. It can be a window to other people and other people's experiences and perspectives. It can help connect us with others, you know, where we're literally sliding that glass door and walking into and, and being a part of participating with others. Um, I think programming can do that just as well. And I think this group really does a great job with that as I've seen so far. Chapter 11 is youth and young adult services. Thank you, Kathy, for earlier. Jenny, you unmuted. Anything you would like to add? Um, you know, I think the thing that struck me in this chapter was 
um, that they defined youth and young adult as zero through 18. And I, I guess when I think of youth services, I hadn't thought of going up to 18. Yep. Well, I was impressed that they called it young adult. I mean, it really does have that range. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think we what we typically see in terms of library participation is, you know, as kids move into middle school, high school, more extracurriculars, more after school, more responsibilities. And certainly that's true in a community such as Lake Bluff. And so sometimes what happens is you see library participation start to drop off in that age group. But that's not, that's common everywhere in all libraries. And plus the the developmental changes that teens are going through, they're looking to be much more independent. So the idea of doing something that they want to do as opposed to being dragged to the library because their parent wants to do that with them, there's a difference. So that's a lot of the reason where, you know, why I think this reconsideration of what teen services is at Lake Bluff Public Library post-pandemic, in pandemic, however you want to phrase it, is so important because there's a whole new crew of middle school and high schoolers that for the last three years really haven't been engaged in library. Do they even know what we offer? You know, um, so there's lots of opportunity there. And I was a teen librarian first, my first job. And so I'll always have that age group and I was gonna be a high school English teacher. So I'll always have that age group really special for me, but Oftentimes that's the age group that's trying to discover and find themselves and a library can help them do that um, with discovering new topics of interest and so much. So mm -hmm. huge advocate for you services. We are at Lake Bluff Book Library. We've got two chapters left, technology. I'll, I'll weigh in here um, as, as chairman of the technology committee. I, I th Thanks, what man. I took away from this is, the, is probably the biggest area of opportunity for us is to um, refine and, and reconsider our technology plan. We have, uh, you know, we have the, the essence of a technology plan from CVI. Um, I think coming out of the pandemic and, and with Renee's onboarding, there's a chance to kind of, there's an opportunity to reinvigorate that annual plan beyond just necessary improvements, the firewall, um, you know, some of the things we touch on here in the, in the standards in terms of um, uh, software needs. I mean, we've got, we're, up, we talked about in the finance committee meeting the other night in terms of upgrading our, our Microsoft Office suite. Um, so I took some solace in this in terms of, even if we're not meeting all of the standards, perhaps in a very discreet way, um, there wasn't anything here that was that was necessarily problematic in terms of where at least not we're not contemplating it or it's not something that's that's on our our radar. Um, I think the from a sort of a procedural or or operational standpoint, the um, the requirement around I don't know I'm trying to pull up the specific standard, but um, it was around the internet policy, and I think coming out of the special committee meetings where you know a lot of that is contemplated as well. Um, we've, we've even underscored some of the delineation or the differences between the internet policy and the, and the, and the, the Wi-Fi internet policy and the, and the, and the specific hardware policy um, and getting those aligned. Um, so yeah, those are just sort of my summary findings here. Thanks so much, Matt. I know we talked a little bit in finance committee about even something like data privacy training, internet security training. This is where professional development and technology kind of overlap and the needs there. Um, and that certainly would support the library's technology. Uh, Bonnie, go ahead, you have your hand up or maybe you're I couldn't tell. Actually, I did, yeah. Um, I guess the, <laughs> the other thing, you know, we've talked about a review maybe every three years for most policies, putting them on rotation for review, whereas here, it calls out an annual review on the internet policy. So I think this technology continues to change, right? It used to be dial up internet, you know, and really kind of hardware driven. Now it's more of the use of the Wi Fi, bringing your own personal devices, things like that. So I found cloud that security. I know that's come up in the past with staff interest in moving towards cloud based. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. And mm -hmm. that will be part of that renewal or that scheduling process to integrate that annual review.
right. Chapter 13, we're almost there. Marketing, promotion, and collaboration. Um, I liked this chapter. I think it offered some interesting opportunities for us as board members to learn from what other libraries are doing by following their social media and following getting their newsletters and also visiting. I know that some of our committees have gone out to visit other libraries in the past year. And I love when I get um, when I get articles from other board members about what other libraries are doing. I always think it's an interesting opportunity to learn what else is going on. And I thought that was definitely something that, you know, we could discuss more as a board is how we could maybe divvy that up a little bit more, make it a little bit more formal, how we're we're learning from other libraries. And you'll certainly see from me, you might already imagine this, I, I'll have regular communication of an article or a, or a piece that came out about a library that I might put on your radar um, as trustees as something to be of note. And I love that you all are already doing that, sharing with each other. So that's really great. One thing that um, struck me this uh, reading um, this chapter and then also seeing the little uh, blitz we got about um, the announcement announcement of, of you coming on board being live on the uh, on our website. I looked at our website today and I was um, startled to see that Melissa Williams is still listed as, as our development coordinator. And I'm thinking we should take that off. Take that off. We're gonna update that right away. Thank you yeah. for noticing that. I was waiting for direction on that. I wasn't sure what to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay direction given with, with okay i can do that <laughs> yes. right now yes she is no longer a staff person and we've already talked at, at department heads about regular review of web, website content and the currency of that so thank you for bringing that up but i just wanted to say thanks to jillian and and other staff members who keep up on that that um you know our, our um our media presence is quite good, I think. Yeah, I think you'll see too with the great graphics Jill has designed for the Star Library campaign and great press release that Martha has written um, that will continue. We have a plan to get our team together for social media um, to have a little bit more of a discussion about how are we using it? Why are we using it? What is its purpose for this library? And to not necessarily create more work or more posts, but just be intentional about the posts and the digital presence that we do have. And with that, I just want to thank you all for um, bearing with this conversation. Um, I know that this is eaten up into typical library board meeting and, and also it's been important requirement for the per capita grant. So I'd like to thank you all for your engagement. Um, I'd like to move on to the next item related to the per capita grant, which is the review and approval of the, I apologize, I forgot to write the word action here. This is an action item. Um, the review and approval of the 2023 per capita grant application. Let me go ahead and share my screen and pull that up for you all. This is further down because I had it later, but we moved it up. So that's why. Okay. So the per capita application is starting on page 10A in your board packet for, for your review. Is there any discussion prior to um, making a motion? Yeah, I will, I'll just interrupt. We've not done this in the past. We, I don't know that, it, is it a requirement that the board approve? This the, is a new requirement This for right. this year. Okay. Oh, just, oh, because of our review. Okay, gotcha. Well, yeah, the per capita grant does evaluate their um, requirements every year, and every year they're slightly different. So this year there was a book, and then the board had to review and approve the application. So Re Renee, it, it's Bonnie, and just to comment to the rest of the board, I think as I read through this, I kind of... <sighs> 
gassed a little bit because it's so overwhelming. Much. Yes, it is. It is. Um, and that's why I wanted to reiterate earlier, this is an exercise for libraries to do to um, essentially benchmark themselves with what the Illinois State Library is saying um, is best practice for libraries. Uh -huh. And I think um, based on everything we've discussed already, even you as a board have identified lots of great work um, and uh, opportunities for prioritization. As I mentioned, the department head team has also done this work looking at all the checklists and that's how each chapter's um, application or that's how each paragraph has been um, developed with that recommendation or those um, observations in mind. So we are not held to completing any or all of these. Um, it, is, it is merely that process of evaluating what is 4.0 service and reflecting on the work that needs to happen at your organization. Is yeah, there I, I, guess, ahead, I guess I just wanted to underscore that um, without the prioritization, it's very overwhelming to, yes. <laughs> to it is in all this. Um, it is, however, what I said to um, maybe Eliza, I said what you all have done essentially is helped us create the beginnings of what could be a long range plan. Some of this being tactical, some of this being strategic, but it's really kind of a brain dump of all the things that we could do. And now the work is to make sure that the board's feedback is incorporated and then think about prioritization. But you're right, that doesn't, that part is not included. Matt, you were saying something? Of course, I was just gonna ask, is there any risk to the responses in terms of you know, we've, we're 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 acknowledging that we've read through what constitutes four stars and we've integrated plans to to get there. Is there any risk that if we omit or leave something out here that the, the grant is denied? Okay, fine. All right, then I. I no, I appreciate that. the question completely. Um, my understanding from other directors, as I was talking to them before, I called you, Kathy, to try and assess. You know, <laughs> all of this um, was that. Uh, a lot of this is check boxes, but okay. it is reviewed by staff at the Illinois State Library, but it is it is not evaluated with a fine tooth comb in that sense. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I went too far. It is reviewed, that's not what I'm saying, it is reviewed. The biggest part though, that we are liable for is the planned use of grant funds. That's really the, the crux of the application. Okay. And there's even an amending process, as Martha mentioned to me later. You can apply for the use of the grant funds for X, Y, Z, but maybe you want to. Everybody's leaving, so I'm just waving them good night. Um, you can plan to use the grant funds in this way in your application. You can also request to amend your plans um, with a process that they have. Thank you for that. I, I, when I read the Absolutely. technology area and it says we, we'll make plans to add, you know, patron accessible workstations, I'm, I'm wondering, do we need to add the word additional there so that no one says, oh my gosh, Lake Bluff doesn't have patron accessible workstations? Well, and my grant experience has been very different to this. Um, this is very open-ended. This is very much an exercise of evaluation and reflection of current practices, but um, you know, really, there are no library standards in that way. I mean, there are government standards, there are city ordinances, but when it comes to library industry, it's best practices through ALA or your state organization. Every library serves their unique community and is responsive to their unique community's needs. So it's hard to have a set of requirements for public libraries across the state that are so different and serving such different communities. That's a good color, thank you. I'm really glad that you asked. Yeah. Any Bonnie, further discussion? Yes, Bonnie. So so this, this is sort of the, you said the key part of the grants application. So- For the library staff so that they can make plans for spending the funding. Okay, so digital materials and library furnishings. Um, I, I, and outreach and community engagement and programming down here, if additional oh, okay, funding allowed. 
This sentence was actually included in previous years applications. And so staff mentioned that to me. And so that was included here for that same reason. This just gives a little bit more flexibility to the spending of that budget to allow for changing needs if it's determined that they need to be changed. I, I just, I, I think in the library furnishings piece, it might be helpful to expand a little bit on the fact that the furnishings in the library don't really support the use of technology. Yes, and absolutely. So while, while they're also showing their wear and tear, I don't know how old they things are, but you know, even like for the straw room where we said, well, we want to make sure we have a table that's got plug a plug on the tabletop, so mm -hmm. you don't have cords draping across the floor. You don't have a, a, a safety situation. Um, so I'll amend that to include that for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. The use of library technology. You saw there were word limits in each section above, and this was the last section. It didn't have word limits. And um, so I, I am able to expand upon. So that's no problem at all. Any other further discussion? Uh, first, I want to jump in here. I know we're going to wrap this up, and I know we all want to take a break. But I want to thank Brene for being really conscientious. She discovered this just a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. there was a deadline. And the and this deadline had been discussed in the past, um, and we still found ourselves without a grant completed. So, um, first to Brene for doing your research, figuring out what needs to be done, and then all of you for just um, accepting the additional responsibility of doing some reading, giving it some thought, and obviously you, you excelled at that. So I very much appreciate all of your work and help. And, um, you know, it's when, when Renee, she said, she called me and said, basically, I know we have to get this done. Is this, you know, a lot, if there's money involved. And I said, Renee, we need this money. This is important to us. And so everybody jumped on top of this. And this is a, a real effort and a team um, accomplishment. So thank you very, very much. And I'll just extend a thank you again to staff that contributed yes. a lot of this content to the application. And um, so I, yes, very much appreciate their very quick turnaround in developing this. And I said to them, this is the first and only time you will have to do this because now I will have had one grant under me and I will know what we did the previous year um, and can go from there. And I'll, we'll have much, much more time to plan. So thank you all, just reiterating what Kathy said. So Renee, if you'd like, I will motion to approve the uh, preparation of the uh, grant and that it's ready to go. And Do I have a second? Thank you, Kathy. Second. Was that John? Yes, it was John. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's this, there's no, there is money tied to this. So I am going to do a roll call vote um, if we do happen to receive it. So going through the line here, um, looking at Zoom, Trustee Heinzelman. Aye. Trustee Zaudi. Aye. Trustee Meyerhoff. Are you muted, Kathy? I was, my dogs are barking, so yeah, uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. And Trustee Hayes. Aye. Thank you all. And again, thank you for your quick, quick turnaround. Go team. Huge mm -hmm. accomplishment. Um, it is 909. Um, do we did I hear Kathy suggest we take a couple minute break? Is that what I heard? Or do we want to pull, push through? Kathy, I can't hear you. You're muted. It's okay if the dogs are barking. <laughs> we have the survey and we have what? 
Um, you are going to share a friend's update, but really the big piece is the um, building survey report. Yeah, I will email the dates of the of the friend meetings to uh, to everybody, and then you can just let Renee know what date you might be available. Um, and as far as the survey, Renee, unless unless no one else, I don't know what do, what what are our thoughts? Of them? It's um you know it's it's not a very st good statistical view of the thoughts of the patrons only 180 oh i thought you meant the building survey is that the one that you wanted to prioritize from the for the new business or did you want to prioritize the community survey um i'm not okay the building survey i think i'm not familiar i don't know the distinction between the two of them Sure. So um, Sean Kelly was the one who presented. Oh, all right. I'm, gotcha. no, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no that's that, okay. All right. I, I thought of that. And now I know what you're talking about. That certainly we, anybody that has any comments about that, the community survey, I think we can put off or discuss in meetings what applies. I think I agree with that. And I'm open to other feedback from trustees, but I had originally said that I'd provide you a brief overview because I only had the data for a couple days anyway. And I'd like to drill in a little bit more with the data for the community survey results with department heads and present a more um, a, a more uh, encompassing uh, presentation of the data, if that would be okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, that sounds good. I kind of feel like we could do the same with the building survey report since we're meeting Monday. Right. Um, B and G is meeting Monday. We can dig into that a little bit more and then bring our findings back. Um, I think everybody should, everybody on the board should read it, but um, yeah, certainly delve in. And I, I hope that we can get Sean to come and talk with us. I hope that works out too. I, I think I think there was a good attachment on the on the on the the far end of one of the Excel sheets that showed the. Um, um, Kind of recommended time frames that some of yes. these big projects are going yes. and that will help yes. with the capital planning so that's especially the ones the more immediate ones we have to figure out how we're going to get through this this year and next where was that bill where, where it's, on, it's on the on the original um attachment, email there was, yeah there was a spreadsheet that showed kind of what their recommendations because the main one was the h factor i was worried about but it looks like that that one could be um, uh, quite a bit out there, but it but it also did it for the I think it did it for the museum as well. So I mean, there's some of those projects will have to be sort of discussed with Matt. With if you go to the original email that I sent you, there are four links that um, link to four different reports, and one of them is a spreadsheet that Bill is referring to in terms of. Um, identifying the time frame Do you, are you finding it yeah, yeah I'm finding okay it. perfect it. thank you i only included the overview report for the board packet but the others yeah. you should still have access to so can i review we are going to table the conversation about the building survey report the committee is going to meet next week and bring back findings and discussions and recommendations to the board meeting in february we are also going to table the conversation about the summer 2022 community survey results with um, the intention of having staff present um, more encompassing and uh, expansive analysis of the data. Um, do, I, do I need a motion for the tabling of those items or no. um, no. just an agreement? Okay, sounds good. Um, I'd like to, because it's, always important staff uh, contribution of every month. I'd just like to highlight the director's report. I should have found the page before I shared my screen, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, the highlights of this month's report, um, of course, the Star Library recognition. Um, I emailed you all today that the press release is now live. Um, we are looking forward to having the graphics finalized very soon, possibly tomorrow, and then we will be scheduling, um, and I think I sent out an email about our next steps for that communication. Um, thank you to Kathy, who submitted a, a, a lovely quote, um, and uh, 
we will talk about further opportunities for staff recognition at the HR committee as well. Um, the Winter Reading Club is now live. If you haven't signed up for it yet, I encourage you on behalf of all the staff here, you can choose how you wanna track your reading. Um, so you can sign up at any of our service desks. We, the program is for all ages, children, teen, and adults. So definitely stop by, it goes through February 28th. I'd like to thank um, Jill and all the staff who were involved in the Winter Story Walk. Um, this year, uh, we had every single business per who participated, um, every single business located on the south side of Scan Scranton, Scanton, I think that is a, a, a spelling error on my part, I apologize. And that has not, I don't believe, has been done before. Every single business participate. This year's feature book was uh, Winter Dance. And um, as a way to evaluate statistics, we had a QR code, which people could opt into scanning for a, an online raffle. Um, and we had 77 people register that they participated in that story walk. Although we um, anticipate that number is greatly higher than that. Um, I think that's a really good response. Um, just a little snapshot of the participation. And I know that was a very much loved and appreciated event this winter. Um, I mentioned I would have more statistics about passports. I wanna honor your time. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, but this month has proved incredible again for passport services, um, but also the first week of January in my first week here, two days in a row, staff um, really hit the record. Uh, within two days, they processed um, a total of 26 passports in 48 hours. Um, that's incredible to me. Um, using this year's data and trends, current estimates uh, project a possibility again, reminding possibility of over $30,000 in revenue in this fiscal year. Um, I provided some context as to why this could be happening. Um, I really appreciated this report um, that is shared about eBooks and databases. Our trend is that we are continuing to see um, increased usage. Um, and I also added a little bit of information about the Digital Library of Illinois, which is related to that article I sent you all. And um, I was told this needed to go into the board packet. Um, much appreciation to Martha for her um, fearless leadership on the Ar Arma Shredden, um, which was uh, the shredding event that took place in my office um, to help prepare for my arrival. Um, and also really great usage of our grab and go craft kits in the youth services team. Um, and that is our director's report. I will um, encourage you to review the statistics report, um, which is prepared and included at the end of the board packet. Any questions I can answer about the director's report? All right, hearing none, um, we are at any and all other business. Any other business we want to bring up at this time? Uh, do we need somebody to go to a friend's meeting? We do. Um, it is uh, Kathy sending me the email and then I'm sending it out to 11, the team. 11 a.m. Saturday at the in the Spruth Room. Okay. Um, which is a change for those uh, trustees who've gone to meetings, they were usually at 10. Now they're going to be at 11 a.m. Um, so if anyone's available, unfortunately, I am not. Um, Lindsay, the president, Lindsay Bornholt, sent this to me, um, just hoping, and she also sent it to Eliza and I believe Martha, so perhaps they're scheduled to go, I don't know. So we've been um, preparing for this on staff for a while and Jillian and I had already sent Lindsay our RSVP. I think she, for, and she has my email. I think she just forgot to include okay. me. Right. Yeah, um, I've never gotten notice before. Yeah, no, it's okay. But, um, and we still don't have a trustee in attendance. Um, Janie, were you about to suggest that someone- I, I, was, that we, I just wanted to make sure because we had moved that to new business and then we kind of skipped it, but- um, Thank you. I, I was going to say that I can attend on Saturday if you oh, like. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you for that. The table that's, in, that's in person at the Spruce Room, right? 
at 11 a.m. Just to be sure that you know that the time changed from right. what it was previously. Right. Um, and I extended an invitation to Lindsay to extend to, actually, I, I asked the board um, of the Friends to join us for Renee's um, gathering. I think she's extended to the All the Friends, which is fine because it's not a particularly large group. And so the more that they're great. very enthusiastic, I'm sure they would love to meet Renee. So. Hopefully we'll have a good turnout from them. And to all of you trustees, I hope that you're available um, for all or part of our, our reception on the 26th. I think it's gonna be nicely. I've sent out 36 invitations. I still don't have an email address for um, the uh, Montessori School. I have to work on that tomorrow. But I think thanks to a lot of you, I've been able to feed in addresses and pretty much get our list. Mm -hmm. Matt, you'd given some good suggestions. At this point, we're kind of, we've, I did include um, the brewery, but we're sort of keeping it on at this point, just because of the capacity of the spruce room um, to uh, individuals who are kind of working with directly with the library. Um, I may pop that out in a few days as I see responses, but thanks for feeding that back to me. I appreciate it. Pleasure. And I learned today that the uh, contact information for Forest Bluff School, there's only one email, and I will send that to you um, early tomorrow morning, Kathy. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping to get hold of one of the principals over there, but we'll do the best we can. Yep. And, and if I may just take a moment to thank you all for such a warm welcome of this upcoming reception. I just appreciate all the effort and time you're putting into introducing me and connecting me to the community. Um, I very much am looking forward to it. And um, just thank you all. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Renee. Good job on your first meeting. Congratulations. We're almost there. We're not done yet. We have oh, to adjourn. We're so close. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Second. Second. John All in favor? Aye. Is that Matt? Aye. Yeah. Matt or John, seconded. take your pick. <laughs> Who seconded? Matt. Matt, John. Matt did? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And all in favor, just one more time because I didn't hear. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Good thank night. you. Thank you. Good night. Have night. a great evening. Bye bye, everybody. On the 26th.